Big. So it's Pipe Company, and the manager has asked you to leave. Well, we're not leaving. It's a licensed premises, and they do have the powers to do no, that. We no, you don't. don't. This yeah. is a public. Whether no. you agree with it or not, can I speak to you now, please, sir? Yep. Right, so basically, you're out of your jurisdiction. You stand under the Maritime Admiralty Law, which is law of the sea. You're out of your jurisdiction here. We have more yeah. authority than both you two and the rest of your and force. And we can, yeah. and we can prove this and Sorry we can make that. citizens arrest too. Exactly. So we're trying yeah, to educate and we're trying to get you guys on board to see sense. There's been mass <coughs> fraud and corruption. This is medical fraud. This is economic fraud. Right? We have more authority. We are living men and women. We don't stand by our birth certificates. You're out of your jurisdiction. We stand on a common law, universal law, which is law of the land. You are working. And as an officer, and we respect you guys, and you've got that uniform, you have no rights. You have obligations and roles, and that is it. The person with the strongest paperwork wins in these courts of commerce. So as long as you've got everything correctly done, you've won. And then you end up getting paid out. So it's like um, people are waking up about bailiffs now. Because we're realizing that bailiffs do not use correct paperwork. They're bluffing it. They're using fraudulent paperwork. They're using warrants that aren't signed by magistrates and all this. Appreciate it's that, right. it's relevant so, you know, to I you. know you've got a job to do. I yeah. know you're working for BBC, but the fact is we don't have a contract with the BBC. Right? We don't we don't sign any contract with the BBC. We've yeah. never agreed to pay the BBC. I mean, here in this country, um, in the UK, for those um, watching overseas, uh, in this country, this corporate country, um, there is something called a council tax. Now, the thing with the council tax is the council is a private for-profit corporation. It's the same as McDonald's. It's no different than McDonald's, Burger King, Tesla, I, you know, Apple, whatever. It's the same. They're, you know, they've all got uh, Dunn's numbers and they've got company numbers and all this. So, in fact, I've got the uh, company number here on my, on my uh, computer for the Government UK Limited. So the company number of U uh, Government UK Limited is 5522373. There you go. Go and look it up. So the government itself is a corporation. Parliament, by the way, is a corporation. Private for-profit corporation. MPs have got no contract with you. You just assume they do, but they don't. Okay, they're private. They, they have nothing to do with the people. Um, but anyway, going back to uh, council tax. Yeah, uh, they have no authority to charge you whatsoever. So there's no obligation to pay. Now you know it's all commerce. What you would do with a council tax is say, well, hang on a minute. Um, am I even obligated? Now, this is how a bill works. Again, people don't understand this. For there to be a true bill, there has to be acceptance of contract first. Okay? So this means that, I, for example, I would have to go into a restaurant. So I'm opening the door of the restaurant. I'm walking in. So I'm beginning to accept the contract of the restaurant. I would sit down. I would place an order. There you go. I've just placed an order. Okay? Now, if the service is to my liking... And I accept and finalize the contract and, and the manager comes up and says, is everything OK with, with the meal and the service? And I say, yes, lovely steak, whatever. Fan fantastic. I've now contracted. Now the restaurant can give me the bill. That's how it works. Well, when the council send out a bill, um, where's my uh, my acceptance? Where's my offer? Where's wh wh Hang on a minute. They have to offer you first. So the council is supposed to say to you, um, would you like to contract with us and uh, pay us £2,000 a year? And you say, no, no, thanks. I don't want that service. And then there's nothing that the council can actually do. So what's happening is, is because the council are acting so fraudulently uh, with this council tax stuff, um, and they're using bogus paperwork, they're using fraudulent documents, um, even the court system won't deal with them the council that's how bad it's getting so when you deal with the council and they say you're summoned to court it's not the court system the council themselves hire out a room and they do a fake court they just hire employees to act like they're a judge it's completely bogus now here's the thing you can you can prove this let's say you get one of these fake summons from the from the council tax and they say right you've not paid and it says summoned and blah 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 there'll be a case number on there okay I mean, first of all, you'll read it and go, hang on a minute, it's, there's no seal from the court, there's no signature from the magistrate, I don't even know the name of the magistrate, so straight away I know it's a bogus document, but I go, okay, what have I got here? Well, there's a case number. Okay, phone up the court. If you phone the court up, you quote the case number, the court is supposed to tell you all the details pertaining to the case. So that is the magistrate, who signed off on it, who is the one making the claim, Who's it against? Dates? Or who filed it? All this, all this information should be given to you. You have that right. 
But you phone the courts up and they'll tell you, sorry, we've got no record of that case number. Excuse me? I'm receiving threats of summonings to court with a case number on it, but the court themselves says they have no record of it. That's seven years imprisonment. You can't do that. People in the council are committing fraud. Now, I don't think that the people low down in the council realize this because they're plebs, all right? They've been dumbed down. They're just following orders, but they are the ones committing the crime. So what do you do? You go after the people within that council tax department and say, look, employees within that council tax department are committing fraud. They're sending out bogus summons with fake case numbers on it. When enough people wake up to this, don't fear. You get together. Here's the thing. Get together with people in your area. There's got to be people who are struggling with the council tax. Electricity has gone up. Gas has gone up. Food has gone up. All petrol has gone up. All the rest of it. They can't cope. Right? Get connected in your local area. Get meet up once a week. Find a venue. Meet up, meet up once a week and start getting this information together. Start drafting your own paperwork. And then start serving the people who work for the council notice. That's how you do it. On a personal level, you do not serve notice on the legal fiction corporation, but on the employees themselves and say, you are committing crimes. Here's the evidence. I've gone and look. It up. You can look it up. Acts and statutes, even in the acts and statutes, it will tell you that a summons must be signed by a judge. It's got to be a judge and a magistrate it has to sign off on it. Otherwise, it's bogus. So when bailiffs come knocking on your door with a with a phone, <laughs> say, we've got a warrant here. <laughs> what no give me the paperwork give me it's mine all right so if someone says they've got a warrant give it to me and i can then verify it and i can say right give me the, i want to see there's a seal from the court is it signed by a magistrate who signed off on it who is the person who's making the claim against me i need to know that person's name i don't deal with legal fictions they won't but if they start waving phones at you say we've got a warrant here you know immediately that's fraudulent because it's a photograph Photographs are secondary uh, evidence in courts. A photograph on its own is worthless unless there's someone who wants to be witness to it. Treat it like commerce. So what you're supposed to do, if you receive any of these documents through the post, you've got to pay a ticket, blah, 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 whatever it is. My suggestion is deal with it and do a reply and say, right, well, I'd like to try and deal with this. Um, you know, I've just received this in the post. Um, fortunately... Um, I can't process what I've received because it's lacking information. First of all, there's no signature. I don't know who sent it. Also, could you please clarify what language you are using and what dictionary are you using? Because the documents that come in the post do not use English. And they do not use Oxford English Dictionary either. They are using Black's Law Dictionary. That's one of the dictionaries they can use. There's several different law di dictionaries out there. So you put the burden of proof on them and say, look, before I can go any further, please tell me the name of the, the, name of the language you're using and what dictionary are you using and what style are you using? Style means font. See, again, with the documents they send you, if they change the style of the font on the documentation, that has a meaning. OK, so there's a lot of stuff in there. So if you see italic writing on some of these documents, that means that the writing's slanted. Well, that means it's not part of the document. It is off the document. OK, the reason being is this is used by judges. So say, for example, a judge would get an original document in court and he reads it and he would like to make a note on that original document, which he can do. Well, he writes it in a different style. And he does it a slanted writing. That means that if someone else then reads it later on, a few, couple of years later, they can tell that that slanted writing was done by the judge and it's not part of the original document. So people within the government use that dirty trick on you and, they, and you just read it. Also, if anything, it's all caps. Well, if you're using English, the, grammatic, uh, the grammatic rules of English means, okay, if we're using English, everything that's written in all caps is an acronym. So if they say summoned to court, this is another way they get away with it. So if you get a document in the post and it says summoned to court and it's written in all caps, it doesn't say summoned to court. It's an acronym, which means the S means something, the U means something, the M means something. So you could go back and say, can you clarify this, please? I would like to deal with your request. I've, you haven't sent me enough information. I can't deal with this. I need to know what language we're dealing with. I need to know what dictionary you're dealing with. What is the style? What is the syntax? 
who sent it to me. I need the name of the person making the claim, full name, full contact information, and I need a signature before I can even move any further. And by the way, my administration cost for doing this work is £500. <laughs> I'm telling you, if people wake up to this, you can fight this in the comfort of your own home with your own paperwork. And if you get hundreds of thousands, millions of people all over the country learning this, just dealing them, you know, sending their own paperwork back, this nightmare comes to an end. We can never get the, we can never get the BBC to take any notice of what's going on in well, the real world. Good. Can okay. I just ask you who you, you should identify yourself first of all? I'm please. Roger Hayes, I'm chairman of the British Constitution Group. Okay, what, what's actually happened today then? Today we arrested a judge for treason and contempt of court. Fantastic. Um, and uh, what, we're, what we're finding is this happening all over the country, that we have got corrupt judges getting away with unlawful acts. <laughs> The judges have been arrested! The judges have been arrested! Yeah.